Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and this is the Power Talk Show. So before we went on our very short break, we were having a very interesting conversation on content creation and the law. These two are very neatly inter integrated, especially these days. One affects the other and we need to understand because this is an industry that most of the youth are getting into and we believe it is the future of the Kenyan youth. So we want to understand how we can better become content creators while aligning with the Kenyan law. And joining me live on set is Celestine who is a, a digital creator and uh, Sandy Kenneth, who is an IP lawyer. So um, we were having a conversation about creation. We talked about it in general because people are learning these skills qua ground. It's your own creativity. It's your intellectual property. It's possible to trademark it. It's possible to come up with a way of ensuring that you do not get this copyright, uh, your content infringed and your rights infringed upon. And we've talked about the need for a body specifically for content creators. So before we went on our break, Celestine, you were just telling us that most ideas bounce off of each other. Yeah. And I think that is just the truth about the world in general. Yeah. People bounce off of each other's ideas and yeah. just fine tune them as they go along. Yeah. But I think uh, if, if you've gone through uni and you've written papers, you're told about plagiarism. Yeah. So you have to credit the original, uh, yeah. the, the, the original author, creator. yeah, the creator of whatever idea, whatever yeah. thought, whatever information that you're sharing. Yeah. For content creation, is that yeah. necessary? Because Celestine, you're just yeah. telling us that people bounce off of each other. But Kenneth, yes. from the law's point of view, yes. do you have to give credit to the original creator? Of course, you need to do that because probably when people are doing parodies, you know, they have to recognize actually the original creator of. Because basically, when you look at when we talk about copyrights, what does it what does it mean? It's exclusive right given to the original creator. Yeah, you understand yeah. of that particular content. either content, mm -hmm. either script, either film, either artistic work, literal work. So it's the original owner. So you, it's basically, you don't have, have a choice. If you have a choice to, yes, you have, <laughs> you have a choice, and then you don't have a choice. But if you feel like you have a choice, and then go ahead now and probably uh, use someone's creations, original creations, without crediting them. That's when now we come now to the infringement mm. of someone's rights. Yeah. That's when you will know how compensation, actually by the when it comes to intellectual property, the compensation is so huge. The protection is, it's minor. Yeah. You see, the other day, Nonini was compensated one million shillings. And it's just copyright using mm. his name by uh, uh, this artist who used his name and when he was recording, I know, Askit or something, you know. He was paid quite an amount, you know. Mm. So yeah, you need to rightfully mm. people should. Yeah. Sometimes or most <coughs> times rather, people don't. They'll just get an idea and then pick it up from there and move on swiftly. Yeah. Now Celestine, because you're in the industry. Yeah. You're it's a creator. So you've done so many skids and yeah. you've done so many things that you've put out there. Yeah. Do you think it's right, or sh if someone else came up with something similar, because yeah. you're in the, sometimes you create uh, humorous skits. Yeah. And there's so many creators, especially in yeah. Kenya, we are known for our comedy and the yeah. humor. Do you feel like you should credit, let's say you got an idea from K Crazy Kenna, do yeah. you feel like you should credit and say, even in the captions, just something so little, to give them credit and say, to the person who originally inspired that, do yeah. you feel like that's something that creators should do moving forward? Okay, let's talk about it. I feel like social media has made it so much easy to be able to <coughs> approach an artist and be like, hi, can I use your content? Or how much does it charge to use your content? Can I use your music? Social media has made it so easy, but sometimes you even DM these celebrities and, you know, they don't it's tell you how, hard. you know. Um, so uh, going back to ideas, you ask me like, I see an idea, I get it from crazy Ken, uh, and you know, like, it's, it's a nice idea. So first things first, I'll give you an example. One of my videos uh, went viral in Nigeria. It was reposted in some 
trending buzz in Nigeria. The page has over 300,000 followers from Nigeria. It's a Nigerian page, you know? And that's my content. They're using my content on their platform. And it's getting fame, mo even more so than in my own page. <laughs> you know what I'm talking to you about? Yeah. And um, so in, in some type of way, you'd be like, okay, these people should tag me for my content. These people should appreciate that this is actually my work that they have put outside there in their platform. So when you talk about copyright, yes. I see the importance where people can just take your content and use it. When you don't, let's say, trademark your things, people can take it and they use it anywhere in the world. And if you don't know the steps, you see now, when I'm using the content, I don't want to be stuck you on your beer, you know? Mm -hmm. But when they're using mine, I'm like, no. Yeah. You can't just use my content. Yeah. So I see the importance mm, could I of... Double standard eh, double? Yeah. <laughs> so I see the importance of copywriting my content to the artist. <coughs> because it's not really hard to copyright content. And it's not really hard to go and trademark like your logo or to go and trademark. Actually, in it's Kenya, not it's, easy. It's, 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 it's easy oh, to it's do easy. the copyright. Tebu ata tuambia ni how much ku... Tebu tuambia. Actually, right now, they've, they've, they've waived the charges. It's mm. free right now. Sure. With, yeah, with Kenya yeah. Copyright Board. Yeah. But now with Kipi, of course, it's it's more of... Yeah. It has a way to, it does its... Intellectual property yeah, rights. They, yeah. they do their own things. Yes, they're doing better and, and great and all that. And I... I've given them credit again. So, yeah, you can move fast and do that, you know, to avoid now the copyright infringement. I remember the famous quote from, <laughs> uh, is it Makoha or Makoha? Makoha. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm. You know, <laughs> it's so, <laughs> to a point when you've gotten into court and then you get to find that now you're being sued, you're supposed to pay yeah. Brand Mutinda was almost crying because of paying the one million shillings. Mm. Brand Mutinda? Yeah. It's Brand Mutinda was paying? W Donini. Who paid oh. Donini? I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, it was a court see. battle. Uh -huh. mm. Actually, on that point, I was also to talk about Ma Actually, I met him, Makoha. Uh -huh. And then, yes, at the Kenya Cultural Center. And mm. then he told me he has, be he has been bereaved and he's looking into Kenyans also coming together and trying to support him mm. in this journey right now. Yeah. So if there is anyone, just know he's also counting on you. Yeah. You get and to you reach know, him directly. When you think about it, um, it's something as easy as if he copyrighted. Yes. He could have gotten so many payouts of from course, that. Because yes. people have been using uh, that phrase that in uh, skids, short films, YouTube, Sijuwapi, yeah. Kila Mahali. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a matter of copywriting your intellectual property Trademark to ensure it. that mm. it's protected. Yeah. Long term, you're assured that you'll be okay. Yeah. It's brought me to the thought of Tunatemenga Kenya. Tunanangama pictures are international celebrities at yeah. haircut. As if you want this hair, look <laughs> like Rihanna. Mm. <laughs> and this is someone's image. This is someone's brand. Yeah. And I, I noticed there was one uh, content creator, a local content creator, whose yeah. face was used. Mm. Because sometimes even with the, the fashion outfits and things like that, yeah. they'll even repost a picture that you had. Yeah. And they say, we have this in stock, yeah. so come and purchase it from us. But yeah. then they've not given you credit. You did not purchase from them. Yeah. You have no deal with them. Yes. Ah. Things like that. So yeah, probably that's in, in like social privacy. media, that's you're mm. supposed to actually now, if now you're having some sponsorship from a certain company, whether it's Nike, any renowned company that, which, mm. which, which Kenyan companies sponsor local artists? Safaricom, yeah. Safaricom. we really have the betting have uh, Bitcoin platform. Used to mm -hmm. sport betting, better. yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of they support the creative industry a lot. Yeah. You understand? The so tinker. if you're doing now promotions with them and then you're doing the promotion, there's a sponsorship there. Most of the time you credit them because now they're, they're the ones giving you the, pro the promotion. Yeah. You have to credit them for you to actually recognize yeah. the Hashtag partnership, advertisements. yes, yeah. advertisements. Yeah. Mm. It's really critical. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I feel like those are sometimes things that people don't know, especially when they're starting out. Yeah. Now, uh, um, before we wind up with that, let me touch on something that we, it was introduced. I think um, uh, last Sunday, I believe, I was just talking about the KFCB, their proposal of uh, creators, especially YouTube, YouTube content creators, yeah. should get film uh, rights and film they should get licenses 
to make content. Yeah. Now when you've Celestine you're just telling us una yeah. me as I record my day yeah. and you need content that's a vlog. It's yeah. different from a film because you know with a film you have the location yeah. you it's a story that you're narrating yeah. but sometimes it's real life. Yeah. Let's talk about that. As yeah. a creator, you've been on YouTube, you've been yeah. creating content. Yeah. Do you think it was uh, something that was uh, practical yeah. for YouTube creators to go and get a license, for them to be able to create and put up their posts on the social platform? Given that, the way we're talking about, these platforms already have their regulations. Yeah. YouTube already has its way of regulating the yeah. content that's yeah. there. Yeah. Do you think it was something that was feasible? To be honest, personally speaking, I don't, I do not think it was. But let me start off saying like this. Uh, again, we, we, we've said like content creation. It's not like it's not the movies. You're not act. It's not acting. You're, you're not like my passion is. I'll be. I'll act or something. No, it's something that you create from within you. You know. So like um, when it comes to you, you, you have your own phone or you have. Everyone who has a phone, everyone who has a Google account, that person can be labeled a content creator because they have these tools for these platforms. The only difference between a content creator and a normal human or, or a normal person who is on TikTok, the only difference is this content creator is doing it as a business, number one, and number two is they are good at it. The content that is put out it's not just a normal content like the normal person putting out the content. There are people, but they are putting out content that is consumable. So yes, we may be in the same room with someone, but I am a content creator because my content is consumable by millions. Millions want to consume my content, which makes my content profitable. So when the KFCBK comes and tells me, you have built this business for, you've said I've been creating videos for three, four years now. You've built this business for four years, three years. Let's say I've, I, I got monetized last year. You got monetized last year. KFCBK comes and tells me, okay, we want, before you post your content, come through us, before you're monetized. Or all these laws that they've brought about. I think that it's so unfair, given the fact that the Kenyan government has not given me tools. The Kenyan government has not taught me content creation. The Kenyan government has already cut the deals with multinational cooperation. It has already cut the deals with the YouTube and stuff. So I'm trying to say like, if they can like get to a point where they can touch the common content creator and provide for them before coming and taking all this. I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's wrong to receive taxes. I'm not saying that's wrong. But what I'm saying is there has to be exchange. Yeah. Teachers are taught in schools. Yes. Doctors are taught in schools. Lawyers are taught in school. The president goes to school. Everyone else, people, actors go to schools. You get me? But content creators, we do it based on our own talent, based on our own gifts. Hey guys, this is a vlog I'm going to Mombasa. You know, and the consumers, they want to consume. So I think like if the government could do something to support the content creators, then bringing in laws that can also, you know, help the Regulate. government as a country, it's fair. It brings about a fair jurisdiction where I even want to make more content for you my country. You don't even feel exploited. Yeah, I want and I to think make on that more note, content yes. for my country. Mm, on that note, let me just toss it over to the legal yeah. expert now. Yeah. Because that was something that was proposed and I believe the stakeholders were not involved. That is the content creators themselves. Yes. The people who are on the ground and even the people who are probably even what were meta, yeah. things like that, platforms like that were not consulted. Yeah. They just proposed something. Mm, yeah. mm. So now, how do we think, how do we feel like these bodies can do better going forward? in terms of engaging the stakeholders, the people yeah. who actually create content. Yeah. Because we've talked about content creation being an investment yes. yeah. in terms of just your energy, yeah. the intellectual property, the yes, tools yeah. that you purchase. Because yeah. as you've said, Crazy Kenna has hired a whole team. Yeah. I've seen so many creators who hire spaces, yeah. hire Airbnbs, sure. hire even yeah. equipment just to be able to shoot content. Yeah. How do we feel like, especially coming from the legal team, yes. how can they do better to engage the stakeholders, yeah. given that the way we're talking about in Kenya, the entertainment industry is just picking up, especially the law side. 
as opposed to like in Hollywood Which or Bollywood. Which is quite Bollywood. unfortunate we are picking yeah. up. In 2024. Because the creative industry exist, has existed since 1973. Well, yeah. You know, mm. it's a whole time. How many years up to, right, up to now? And we're still talking about the same, same problems. Every yeah. other day on interview, we're talking about the same problems. We're talking of changing the people who are there. We're talking of having an improvement. We're talking of people who are... Mm or are head of, of these organizations, mm. whether the Kenya Film Classification Board, whether the Kenya Copyright Board, yeah. whether the Kenya Industrial Property Board, mm. whether the Kenya Cultural MCSK. Center, you mm. know. Mm. Yeah, those All are CMOs that are regulated with, with Kenya Copyright Board. I oh. wouldn't want to touch on them, because if probably we have anything, because recently there've been uh, cases whereby they've been been mad with allegations of corruption and all that, mm -hmm. mismanagement of artists, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't really want to touch so much on oh, that. It's, it's so different. Now, Kekobo yeah. are the ones probably who are supposed to, to try and see what mm -hmm. can they do for the industry. Mm -hmm. But now, because them. time is almost lapsing, yes. I want to understand, especially you, you're a very young man, getting into the industry you've been practicing since you were a student yes what do you feel like the people who haven't studying law right now yeah should they pursue entertainment law what do you think the bodies the the legal side what can they do to push forth this agenda of taking content creation seriously and amending the laws that are already in place in terms of regulating content creation okay i'll, I'll pull that question from the top so looking at what does the united nations on conference on trade and development say about the creative economy. It says the creative economy is the summation of the creative industry as a whole, whether it's trade, development, and all that. So they're looking into whatever they have, they're looking into having the creative economy propelled to the next level. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, mm -hmm. they're giving them incentives. Mm -hmm. That's why recently we have the creative economy bill, mm -hmm. we have the creative economy policy. So those are the things that are supposed to be spearheaded with whatever framework they, 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 they're having, mm -hmm. it looks to be shedding light. But no, the implementation, that is where now we, we draw the line. So at least this time <laughs> round, we are supposed to at least have something <laughs> that is going to propel the industry to the next level. It's not yeah. just forming bodies. But now, on my side, what I'll think about right now is now we get to have a voice from the artists, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even the uh, this on probably on looking at what these bodies control. You will get maybe artists control like 70% of whatever it is that is in the creative economy, right? Mm. So, you know, that's why we are at 5.3% in the creative economy. That is the GDP that uh, they're bringing in for the country. So why don't we spur the creative economy for it to improve the GDP? We shouldn't just look about ourselves. Let work, let's work for them. So we're coming up, probably, we have a body. We, we have this body, the creative economy of Kenya. They're coming up with something, whether in fashion, film, music, you know. So they, they're supposed to be a body representing artists, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah the Honre Bababu Namwamba has been trying to do good for the creative economy, and yeah. I want him to push it a, a notch higher yeah. to try and now also, because we're looking at him, because it trickles down. Mm. You know, you wouldn't now start from the bottom to the top. True. You start from the top to the bottom. So he's supposed to really put, put a hand on this for all these things to work. Yeah. That's actually the best way I could say. So we're having a representation from the artist side. We're having a, presenta a, a, a representation from this side. Let people sit down, discuss, get to a consensus, then implement. You just yeah. don't wake up from nowhere and then come up Decide. with a law and then revoke Without something. Without consultation. Actually, you agree with you. It doesn't make sense to agree with at you. all. I, was, I, I had the chance to like be with the Honorable Babu Nam. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> let me tie that thought because our time is lapsing. Let, let me okay. tie that thought to yeah. this one thing that I want to ask. We've had platforms like TikTok, which is under threat yeah. about being banned and there are all these things going on. Yeah. There are creators who grew on TikTok. There are creators who are reliant on TikTok. And these other platforms like YouTube, Instagram, there are people who hinge on these different platforms. Yeah. What will be the impact of mm. dissolving a platform like this? Mm. So tie it to that thought so of a Babu okay. Namwamba. Speed, speed. I was at the Kenya National Theatre event and the Honorable MP was there. And he said 
the first thing he wants is pesa mfukoni mwa artist. Pesa mfukoni mwa artist. So let's talk about the TikTok. If TikTok is banned, let's say like this, you know, social media or online platforms, they are banned. I think like it brings a massive and a radical change because again, when I told you, there are some videos that are specifically made for TikTok and some are made for other platforms. So I think for the people who have focused their brands on the platform, let's say of TikTok, they have focused their brand there, they have focused their audience there, they sell their product there, be it merchandise, be it whatever it is that they are selling. If they have focused only on that platform, if that platform goes offline, then there is no other place that they can get, they'll have to switch to another sort of platform. So they basically lose their source of so income. So they, they lose their source of income. But in another way, I'd like to, to, to tell creatives outside there that they cannot limit, limit themselves to only like one social platform necessarily. As a creative, you need to be creative enough to like, like your product, because this is your product. Your product needs to be able to uh, be malleable mm. for all these other platforms exactly. that yeah. it can be consumable. Not just on TikTok, you cannot just limit yourself and say this is my brand, this is my space. You need to be able to be malleable, because this is the business. I'll give you an example. In the car industry, mm -hmm. Kitambo people walikuwa wanatumia old cars, but right now they are using better cars. Yeah. So I think it's just the same, same thing. It's like also we maybe progress. A, a, a uh, there's an aspect of mm. being able to fit into every single platform because yeah. we talked about the community guidelines, we talked about the creative aspect. So you need to create content that will cut across Instagram, yeah. YouTube, TikTok, you so that in case one... I, I Let me interject you for a minute. I'm mm. sorry, but <laughs> I'm so sorry. I want to give you that time. Yes. So maybe you can tie that with your parting shot. Cindy uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, so for me, I'll really say, uh, looking at you know countries that ban uh, social media platforms are countries that have created a platform. China banned TikTok because they have WeChat. Mm. Mm. They banned WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Tell, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because okay. they have WeChat <laughs> yeah. or Google. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me what we've created that has been able to glue Kenyans together for us to start banning other. Platforms. other platforms True. Yeah. you understand so the best way is to try and just regulate, regulate. Mm. that's the only thing that we can do because now the creative industry content creators are the future yeah. Yeah. you know these are it's the future actually because of ai most of people are going to go out of the market yeah, we are you the know future. content we creators are. are the future so we should give them a better chance and a great chance yeah. Yeah. we have great laws rules you know mm. we have these people the who platforms. even now give incentives to the creative industry be able to support it before they revoke some of the things that the creators are going to benefit from yeah. let them give them something more than taking something out yeah of them. give an alternative yeah instead of just taking away without offering anything yeah you're because supposed as to we've take said, an offer content creation is the future so many mm. people are hinging on this it's Contributing 5.3% yeah, of the GDP. Right yeah. now. So Celestine, yes. if I'm a creator and mm. or if I'm an aspiring creator and yeah. I want to come up, so how should I start? Just give me that briefly in under 30 seconds okay. and tell us where we can find you on your socials. Okay. Thank you so much for this opportunity again. For anyone who's watching me, my name is Celestine Junior. Uh, you can, yeah, that's my name on all social platforms. What I'd like to tell anyone who wants to start content creation Number one, you've all, you have all heard it. Content creation is the future. Content creation is the future. And so if you have this gift and you can do content creation, get to learn about it when you're starting off. Don't just throw yourself at it. You're going to make a lot of losses and learn from the failures. First things first, learn behind the scenes about the law. Learn what to do with the law because it's going to be advantageous about the laws of content creation. And even as you're learning and putting out your own content, I want you to know that the future is bright and Amen. there is so much hope. I love that. Yeah. So I feel like people should just be themselves yeah. and put out content. Now, tell us, Kenneth, where yes. can we find you? In case I need a lawyer, yes. as a creator, where can I find you? Uh, 
for me by on social media I'm a Sandy Kenneth I have several uh, colleagues that we work with uh, advocates uh, Alikin and Kenja and then we have Kavila and company advocates we actually located at Consolidated Bank uh, third floor opposite CJ's that's where we have an office so in case anyone has anything that the, they should ask you can just walk through and be able to come you'll get any assistance that you want Thank you. I have a whole team behind me for us <laughs> and we <laughs> love dope. that that's so amazing yeah. and I think that's it they've said everything that needs to be said content creation is the future understand the law that regulates it and do not be afraid start now if you have a smartphone if you have ideas start now start from where you are learn on the job and make sure that you understand the law that regulates it that is it for us today i hope you've enjoyed this conversation a repeat of this will air tomorrow between 1 and uh, 2 p.m i believe and we will also be up on youtube so stay tuned to y254 tv we have more amazing content coming your way and we will be back here next week, same time, same place, with another amazing conversation. My name is Cheryl Blessing, and this has been the Power Talk Show.